What's up? What's up? What's up, everyone? Hey. Welcome to Welcome. <laughs> the breeze. <sighs> Experience. I am Miss Natalie B. And I am the Dion Victoria. Absolutely positively. And y'all, we a little sad, but you know, it's always excited for the show, but a little sad. <laughs> you know, it, it is uh officially our last show for a while. You know, we'll be back though, but we're taking a little break to revamp and think of some great programming for y'all to come back with. But you know, we gonna miss y'all and whatnot. Yeah, planned hiatus, planned hiatus. All right, tis planned. We knew we were gonna take this break before we started, but it don't make it no easier to leave. No, not at all. Even for a short amount of time. No, <laughs> but yes, y'all know how we do though. Before we hop into the show, which is abundance, when we have a week five in a month, we gotta turn up for the abundance around us. Look, it was just a full moon the other day. We got a fifth week of abundance this month. It's Women's History Month. It's a whole lot to celebrate and be excited about. And abundance is definitely one of them. I hope y'all manifesting an abundance in your life every day, every all day, day, because it's necessary. And you are an abundant being, so you need to be manifesting your element. <laughs> okay, we don't operate in lack. <laughs> all right, but before we get into all of that, here. we go. What you say? I said we don't do that here. Oh, we we don't do that here. <laughs> we operate in abundance. Come on, are we abundant yet? Yes, we live in abundance. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? You see I what did. I did there? I did. <laughs> I saw you when you cried. I saw you when you cried. <laughs> <laughs> But well, all right, y'all, we're going to get started the way we always do. While this song is playing, feel free to share, feel free to tag, feel free to like, whatever you need to do. But make sure people see this amazing word of abundance we're about to give y'all. We're about to play our self-appointed theme song, which is India Ari, which is brief. It's a necessary song. It's an amazing song. Again, if it's y'all first time with us. Go look up this song and listen to it after this as well. But definitely go check out India Irie. Blessings Goddess for creating this song. It's timeless and it's perfect. All right, here we go. Breathe by India Irie. Sometimes you just can't believe the things your eyes see. So much injustice in this life. And it's happening right on your TV screen. So you drop to your knees and you're praying Cause you can hear him say and he can't breathe And it's all so overwhelming Because you know there's nothing you can do to help him Continue to breathe Continue to breathe In times like these That's what your heart is for Continue to breathe Continue to breathe In honor of your brother That's what your heart is for There's always someone trying to take someone's power away The history of the world is violent Will it ever change? Now we're living in a time where you just can't hide There's a camera in every hand It's not elusive Even when they treat you like you're useless We know what the truth is Continue to breathe Continue to breathe In times like that's what your heart is for Continue to breathe Continue to breathe In honor of your brother That's what your heart is for Fight for your life Fight for your life In the face of a society That doesn't value your life For the men in your life For the boys in your life for your brothers, for your fathers, for the ones that came before us. For the future, for the future, for the future, for the future. Continue to breathe in times like these. That's what your heart is for. Continue to breathe. Continue to breathe in honor of your brother. That's why. 
Yes, y'all. Breathe by India Ari. Welcome again, everyone, to the Breathe Experience. <laughs> again, as always, we hope y'all feel that song. We hope it sits in your soul. Katie felt it. Go shout on him, Katie. Go shout on him. Shoot again. Shoot as you said. Go shout on She started screaming again. She smiled. Shout on him, Katie. She felt it in her spirit. Let that baby feel it. Go ahead, Katie. She say Sister India did that. That's what she said. She said Sister India did that. <laughs> but welcome back to the Breathe Experience, y'all. We here every Tuesday. But this one the last one for a while, y'all. <laughs> but we going to give it to y'all good. We going out on abundance. And we'll be back. It's not forever, y'all. Plan break. We'll be back soon. Uh, but we're going to go out with a bag. We're talking about the abundance of feminine energy. It is the energy that keeps on giving. Yes. So if y'all got a testimony on your abundance of feminine energy, on the abundance of feminine energy that was given to you, because we're not going to forget this is Women's History Month. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we get an extra week to celebrate women's history. And then also, before we jump too far into this thing, we got to take our brief moments. Who need it? Oh, Dion, ready. She ready, ready. You go right ahead. So. I'm ready. <laughs> so who, okay, I didn't give Natalie a chance to finish. I'm sorry. Who, who needed, needed to breathe? <laughs> <laughs> you got to put, you can put it as one way, one side or the other. Needed, like they just needed to Katie take, said she breathed right now. She needs to take some breaths. Or whether somebody needs to take breaths for good things. I'm going to say I need to take breaths for some really positive things. I woke up yesterday and my horoscope said, basically, the stars have a line. Chill out. Everything's all good. You and you, you right where you're supposed to be. Blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. Chicka, chicka, chicka. So I'm like, okay, it's going to be a good day. Today was a good day. Yesterday was a good day. Let me tell you. Come on. I had to take a breath because... Talk about they were talking about the abundance of feminine energy. Let's talk Come about on. the feminine energy right here, right within self for all the women out there. Celebrate the abundance of feminine energy within self. Do y'all okay? see right here? So let me tell y'all what happened yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday I got on a plane with two small children under the two and under, right? Mm. I had two small children by myself with two car seats, a stroller. Three large carry on, I'm sorry, three large check bags and two carry ons. Did I say that correctly? Three, mm -hmm. large three check bags, two carry on. Two carry ons. That's five bags. Two stroller, uh, two car seats, a stroller, and two small children. Mm -hmm. That's 10 different items I was juggling. Outside of yourself. Outside of myself. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it'd be hard enough just to get yourself ready for a flight 10 items and people two people eight items mason come i already on. did stop come on so <laughs> i'm gonna just recognize the feminine energy in myself and the abundance of it and how and how, how did that trip go sir? girl it went amazingly smooth Blessing. Blessing. Hush, 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 hush. Babies, no. I just told her to hush. Why would you do the same? <laughs> they were out robbing, sis. <laughs> they really going back and forth. Do it again. I'm, let me get something to throw at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
You want an orange? Now he want the orange. Right. He's like, don't, don't, don't threaten me with a good time. Right. <laughs> you gonna throw an orange? Let me throw an orange. <laughs> No, I'm gonna have to give you one later. It's not working out, son. So, anywho, um, I tried to feed you before the show. You wasn't. He wasn't going. He needs to take some breaths. Cause <laughs> I was like, "Come on, let me get you some food. Let me get you together. The show about to start. He want to play games. He want to run around and do his thing. Okay, cool. Sit down. Babies Just- be thinking life work around their time. No, no, no." That's no, no. You're gonna be hungry for an hour then, sir. We don't do that here. It's scheduled. I, like <laughs> I took my breath and accepted my divine feminine energy and the abundance of it that I had yesterday. And I'm just I'm on cloud nine. I'm like, you can't tell me nothing. Okay. Super mom. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Yes. Yes, yes Mason. Come on in the firm that energy. That's for incredible mom. It, it, incredible. Yes. Incredible mom. <laughs> baby, because traveling with one baby hard enough, let alone two of them babies. Yeah, traveling by yourself. And <laughs> one that can run away from you. <laughs> one can run. One can one. I mean, they both can get snatched. It's just a lot. It's a lot. But you did it, sis. I'm super proud of you. Traveling with children is a thing, and you conquered it with hella luggage. <laughs> hella luggage. Yes. And that's me. That was me trying to be conservative. Oh. <laughs> for a like, week. We gonna, I'm like, for a week, we're going to have one suitcase. <laughs> I hope it's a washing machine. Well, but we going because we gonna put all this in one. Oh, we gonna all have one suitcase. No, right, I'm not gonna play with y'all this week. <laughs> we gonna roll it real tight. <laughs> but you did it. Five did. bags, two babies. Come on, self. Yes, that's the bad oh, thing right now. That is. Come uh, on, and it's the gift. I mean, yeah. That keeps on giving. Yes, yes I'm for it. Yes, I'm for it. See, mine is the dentist. So it ain't about divine feminine energy. It's about the dentist. The what? What did you say? The, the dentist. Oh. So I'm I'm not a fan of the doctor or the dentist. Not that, you know, some people are afraid of it. Some people are. I'm not afraid of the doctors nor the dentist. Whatever you need to do, do it quick so I can go home, right? Uh, so we went to the dentist today. It was my my son's first dentist appointment, okay? Um, and man, just check up, follow up, right? My my part that I don't like about the, the doctor or the dentist is that you have to wait. Most of the time, not all the time, but a good percentage of the time, 15 years. Before you see said doctor or dentist. And then you get back there. And then you got to wait a little bit more. A little bit more. Then when the doctor or said dentist arrive, they look at you for like two seconds and be like, all right, that's it. Have a good one. I've been here five hours for you to be like, all right, cool. That's why. It's supposed to be at least half of the time. If I'm here for five hours, you better look at me for two and a half. <laughs> right, right. A something, a something, baby. But, you know, I, I had to take my brief moment on that because we had to wait. And I was just like, whatever. I'm going to make the most of this. So I was really proud of myself. Um, Of course, COVID is a small waiting room. So I'm like, I'm not going to sit in here with my baby. Uh, we could have just go walk around. So we made a venture of it. We just walked up and down the street. I told the people to call me when um when it was my time. They said, okay. And we walked up and down the block. We walked on the little, you know, how to <laughs> little plants we sometimes be raised. So you can walk on the edge of the planters. So I taught him how to be adventurous and walk on the edge of the planters. We fa- It was a library right on the corner. So we had our first trip to the library and our first trip to the dentist in the same day. And he was excited to see all the books in the library and run through the library um, and see all the books. So uh, I had breathed because I'm like, oh, we're going to be late forever. But I'm just like, we're going to make the most of it. And it turned into a really good time. He had fun. We played outside. We um, saw fire trucks and 
all of that good jazz, which he loved. And he loved his first visit to the library. The librarian was super nice, right on 70, um, 79th and Cottage Grove. I'm sorry, not Cottage Grove, in uh, King Drive. Librarian was amazing. She gave us um, arts and craft projects to do. And she gave me some mommy arts and craft projects to do. And she was just super nice. So it turned into a really great experience. He ain't got no cavities, whoop, whoop. Um, cause you know, kids will fight you to the, to the end, not to brush their teeth. Kids will squad up with you to get their teeth brushed. That I don't know if it's y'all kids, but it's my kid. He'd be like, teeth brush. I'd be like, <laughs> I put him in a headlock to brush his teeth. That's all. <laughs> we don't do that over here. <laughs> Baby. Well, shout out to Mesa. Okay. Mesa be like, come on, give me that brush. I no, could, baby, I be having to put in hair locks and all types of stuff to brush them teeth, but we gonna brush them teeth. So he ain't had no cavity. Shout out to that. Uh, and my teeth are good too. So we went it. But y'all, that's for everybody who out here, whoever sat in the doctor's office for um teeth hours or a dentist's office for um teeth hours. Y'all feel my thing. Go ahead, breathe with me on that one. But being in a high traffic area, find something to do with them kids. All right. Find something to do. Go walk about. I think the only huh? time I haven't had to wait for the doctor too long was when I was giving birth. <laughs> That's because they like, get her in there. <laughs> this baby is coming out. <laughs> the baby's coming. <laughs> That's a shame, though. The only time you ain't got to wait for a doctor is when a baby coming out of you. That's just, <laughs> That's just the emergency room hours. And it's an emergency sitting in that room, waiting room for hours. Yo, we got to fix the healthcare system. Can we fix it, please? Fix it. They said it's, if we don't feel like it's an emergency, it's not an emergency. I'm about you shot? No. Give us three hours at least. Yeah. You, just got, <laughs> you know, your hands just feel like it's splitting open, like you're about to die. You'll be okay. You'll be all right. They tell you to take a brief moment. <laughs> right. Take a few breaths. We'll see you in about five hours. You'll be okay. But yes, y'all, that was my brief moment. It was a um it was a good brief moment. It was a, I didn't get stressed out. I was just like, all right, this is the thing. I've when people said and I got there after one o'clock that they were there for a 12 30 appointment, I was like, Oh, okay. And I saw how many people were in the waiting room, and then people were coming in at once. I'm saying that they was there for like a <laughs> a three o'clock appointment, and I was like, Oh, okay, this is gonna be a thing. Come on, baby. <laughs> We just finna, you know, I ain't take no, no, no stress to it. I was just like, we finna go walk around and enjoy this day. Okay. So yeah, take y'all brief moments. However life throw life at you. If it's a good brief moment, if it's a bad brief moment, or if it's just a, I'm gonna get through this in this moment, I'm gonna get through this brief moment, whatever it is for you, take that brief moment and just know that it's a moment in life. That's all these things are. It's just moments in time. They shall pass. And how you deal with it is the part that will last. And so, Dion, girl, you conquered that, sis. And girl. if y'all don't know how proud I am of Dion, because Dion don't like airports by herself. She don't like airports. And she did an airport by herself with two babies. She hit boss level of mothering right there. Okay? Boss level mothering. So we are about to talk about the abundance of feminine energy. Okay? This is our abundance show. Let's talk about feminine energy real quick. Since this is Women's Month, this is coming in on the end. Let's just talk about real quick when we talk about feminine energy, what are we talking about? Because sometimes people be like, feminine energy, woman, that's it. Nope. True, but also. And nope. also. <laughs> feminine so energy, and this is for everyone watching, feminine energy, we are not just talking about women. Males have Feminine. Uh oh, don't 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 try to house them. Male uh, have feminine energy. What? <laughs> like they just lost it out there, sis. But it's true. The thing is, just like males have feminine energy, women, females have both masculine and feminine energy we both have masculine and feminine energy the thing is balancing that energy and living in that energy without making it be a male female woman man thing 
I like to say that <laughs> women and men aren't that different. We just society has just made it that way with these gender roles and stereotypes and all of these different things that they put upon women and men. They drift us further and further apart where we think we can't understand each other. We think we it's skip everything society has taught you. This is what we need to teach our kids. I think of it like this. I'm sorry. You were no, I was just gonna say we just need to teach our children that we both have masculine and feminine energy, and we need to balance the two and stop teaching and perpetuating gender roles. Because a lot of the times we do it without even knowing that we do it. If we go into a toy store, we were talking about this the other day. You go down a girl's alley, you see baby dolls, you see our kitchen sets, you see all of these things that are like this is what girls do, this is what women do: take care of children and cook. You go down a boy aisle, you don't see one baby doll. You see action figures. You see toy guns. You see weapons. You see all of these different things. But you won't find Nan cooking set. You won't find Nan baby doll in the boys aisle. So even those subconscious things are perpetuating gender roles. Why can't a little boy play with a baby doll and learn how to take care of a baby? And we wonder why we got so many absentee fathers that don't know how to take care of kids. We have to think about <laughs> The yin and the yang, which I mean, the yin and the yang symbol, that's what it kind of represents. But they say good and bad with a little bit of good or with a little bit of bad. But it's also just like feminine and masculine with a little bit of masculine with a little bit of feminine. So like right. every white part of the peace symbol has a, or a yin and yang symbol. Every white part has a little bit of black and every black part has a little bit of white. And mm -hmm. so with that knowledge, we can accept that, that we all have a little bit of each other, but we balance each other out. So, like, feminine energy balances masculine energy, masculine energy balances feminine energy. Um, the other part I want us to acknowledge is that feminine energy is like the epitome of creativity. Mm hmm why feminine energy is abundant is because things come from it. Like you create out of feminine energy. We talked about it on the creative show. Men, if you're an artist, if you make it, basically if you make stuff, if you make anything, that's your feminine energy. Anytime you create something, being creative, anytime you um, put something together that didn't exist before, feminine energy, okay? That's what you are using. Anytime you are powerhousing through things, pushing, using your weight to push yourself around, you know, using money to push things around, that's masculine energy. So right now, today, we're acknowledging that feminine energy is abundant. And what are all the things that come from the abundance of feminine energy? Children. Art. Art. <laughs> Music. I mean, all kinds of art. So like, Fine arts, painting, dancing, theater, like all of this is feminine energy. You know, and, and back in like the 60s and 70s, it was looked upon, it was looked down upon if a man used his feminine energy to, to get himself further. You know, a, a man artist, what? That's for women. What are you doing? Even though back in the day, women weren't allowed to paint. Like we had to paint in secret. Like we didn't, they didn't give us no painting classes. What? What do you need a painting class for? Because it was at the You're muted. Katie muted you. <laughs> there we go. Back in the day, it was considered a masculine thing, right? That is a C. So anyway, that goes back to like the whole idea around gender roles and how we have to stop making things about gender and just look at what it is like what it is is that creativity is a feminine energy thing what it is is that when you use your power to get things done that is a masculine energy thing and what it is is that you oh ah, something just came to me okay just, just hello receive let us know share it with the crowd can we share it with class so in the same way like we like push our power around to get things done with our masculine energy, with our feminine energy, we more so receive. So like whenever you're making something, it's not so much that you're like pushing or pulling and like, oh, I got to do this thing. You just kind of like receive 
whatever comes to you and make it. And let it come out. Seven energy. Just receiving whatever comes your way and you make something of it. Make something of it. Make, make, make something of it. Absolutely. And I think that's that's the part. Like for people to truly understand what man. so thank you for like slowing it down. Say, like, all right, let's break this thing down. Because that's the part, truly understanding what masculine energy is and truly understanding what feminine energy is and knowing that we both have it and knowing that we have to be balanced in it. Because this is the part. I know we're talking about the abundance of feminine energy, but for men, let's look at men for a second. For men who do not accept their feminine energy or do not let their feminine energy flourish or do not want to live or some of them just straight up rebuke <laughs> their feminine energy right they're unbalanced and that is where toxic masculinity comes from and that is not healthy or happy for nobody not the being who was living in that now the people that's receiving that energy out into the world that toxic masculinity honey can you just throw that in the trash can you burn the whole trash can then you throw the whole thing away again like it's it's horrible so we have to understand that what men you have to live in both you have to be balancing that both that masculine and feminine energy and knowing that feminine energy does not make you homosexual it does not even when we tell little boys, oh, you too feminine, right? What, what does that mean? Because they like to dance or they may you like to like sing. Girl. Right. You act like a girl. But then you're, what is that to act like a girl? Like, it's just like we have to start rethinking these meanings. You That fosters that identity of one of those gender roles we need to get away from. because uh, Or telling the same thing, telling a girl. That she acts like a boy because she likes sports. Why can't she like sports? Telling a girl she acts like a boy because of the clothes she likes to wear. Why can't she like pants? Why can't she like shorts if that's what she's comfortable in? You know what I'm saying? So, so do especially doing those things to children gets them really, really confused. And that's when we when we do it, when we tell them, oh, you're too boyish or too mannish. Or, oh, you, you, you act like a girl or you're too feminine. When you're telling these young people that, you're hurting them. And they're at, they, we need to accept us whoever and however we are, period. It's too many posers and fakers out here in the world. This is a sad bar, but I need to go here because I was walking down the street thinking about this earlier. The world would be different if we accept ourselves for who we are and lived in that truth. It is too many people out here with masks on and fronting to the highest degree of frontosity. Stop it. Stop it. Be yourself and let the right people who's meant to be around you and support you and love you find you for who you are, not who you're trying to be. It has to be exhausting. It has to be tiring. Stop trying to be somebody else. Stop trying to flaunt. If you got to take pictures with money, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. If you gotta take pictures with money, I don't believe you. What? <laughs> I'm talking about people that's putting on the front. Stop putting on the front, baby. Right. But this is what we do to these kids when we tell them, "Oh, you to this or you to that." They try to they start to change who they are to fit an image, which means they fronting because they're not truly being themselves. If you gotta pose with guns to, to say you a gangster, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. So that's what I'm saying, y'all. And no shade to anybody who do, does those things. If that's your thing, if you got to put a shoe to your ear to say you looking fly out here in these streets, if you, whatever you need to do. But please be yourself. And stop hindering these children from being their selves because then we grow up and have confused adults. Then we grow up and have adults that feel they need to front and be someone they're not. If you are a male and you have feminine energy, Every male does. That's totally fine. If you're if you're okay with expressing your emotions, that's beautiful. That is called emotional literacy. You emotionally literate if you know how you feel and you can express that. It's not a, a high not top-notch quality of a man not to know how they feel or express it or 
receive or accept or give love. Those are good qualities in a man. And as a as women, we have to like know our role in all of it, right? I've been thinking about this a lot lately. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> she did just tee up on you. <laughs> as women, we are nurturers. Yes. We rock the cradle. We raise the babies. We perpetuate certain ideas. Not saying, I want to pause you for a second. Not saying that men can't also do those things. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, as women who are the physical manifestation and expression of feminine energy in the human realm, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Physical manifestation and expression in the human realm. Mm -hmm. We have to play our part and accept it. Accept that we are nurturers and accept that we are guiders. And then we can understand how truly abundant we are in our feminine energy and why it's important for us to step into our power. Like, come on, like, think about it. You're the, I have two little humans here. Whatever my ideals are, are being expressed through these two human beings. Not saying that they're going to completely do everything I so, so, say for them to do. They came here with their own agendas. Mm-hmm. But as their mother, as their guide in the human realm right now, I'm helping them understand the world around them. And I'm, I'm imparting on them certain ideals and certain ways of functioning that as their mother... That's kind of my role. Again, mm-hmm. fathers play this role in a different way. However, at this age, where they are in this early stage, mothers play a larger role. So I have to, have to, have to step into those shoes real tall. Like I can't step in halfway, one foot in, one foot out. I'll be looking like a goofy walking around with one shoe on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get. And I gotta, so are your children. <laughs> We all look goofy. Why do you only get one shoe? Everybody's <laughs> looking, I was trying to figure it out. No, I'm not about to be that person. So, and, but I think what you said one one thing that you said was really important is that we have to accept as women that feminine energy because I'm I'm seeing the shift now. And you let me know if you see it or not, or if I'm just flat out wrong. But I'm seeing a shift where one women are being celebrated for masculine energy or like literally suppressing feminine energy and living in masculine energy. And again, women and me, we both have both, but women are being celebrated for being dominantly in masculine energy. And we also see that's like in corporate, that's in like, you know, industry with job things. And then we're seeing on the streets just day to day, especially in urban communities, Young women are taking that masculine energy more and more. And, and people make jokes about it. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard the jokes about Chicago girls now. Nah. And they say, uh, they come holler at you and be like, hey, shorty, come and check it out. And they said, that's the women hollering at the men. <laughs> I can see that. It's, it's funny. And men have experienced like I've heard it. Women say that to men. Like, like yo. real life men say this and they've experienced this, right? Like men experience this from women. Like, well, they like, hey, let me holler at you, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like, shooting a shot. And ain't nothing wrong with a woman shooting a shot. I ain't saying that at all. But that's that masculine energy <laughs> behind that. So in the recent years, there's a shift where women are living in more of a masculine energy. And I I honestly, in my opinion, I'm going to say this wholly, in my opinion, when we look at the world and we're like, yes, of course, things are not perfect right now when it comes to the youth, when it comes to the black community, a lot of things are not perfect. That's why it's our job to, to better ourselves and better whomever we can so that we can create this change. Right. But people act like, how did it get here? Like, what happened? There's a lot of things that happen. Okay, we're not going to dive into all of them. But the part that deals with feminine energy and women is I feel like since the beginning, for the most part, um, since we came come to this country and, and post-slavery, right, uh, men have, have traveled, let's say that, right? Men have not always stayed at home. <laughs> men, uh, a, a lot of times talking to some of these elders and about their family life, have had several families at the same 
All right. Um, that's been a thing. Not saying it's right or not, but that's been a thing. Papa was a rolling You stone. feel me? They've written songs about it. All right. Uh, so that has been a thing. We're not going to act like that's new. Not right. Not saying it's right at all, but it's been a thing. But women, mama, similar to what Dion just said, that feminine energy and knowing that we are nurturers, knowing that we are givers and knowing that we also receive, right, have held it down. So you cannot say that black women ain't held down America. I'm sorry. I will argue you to the T. I will disagree. All right. What black women has held down America, period. I don't care who the president was. Black women has held down America. Okay. Um, and now it's real prevalent. But anyway, mama's was home. Mama took care of the family. Even if Papa had um, other families. I've heard stories where Papa's had other family and Mama knew about it and Mama would make sure that family had food to eat. You know, That's I've heard... A real woman balancing out her feminine abundance. You hear me talking to you? Because Daddy wasn't rich, but she made sure both families had food because them kids ain't got nothing to do with it. They shouldn't be hungry. You know what I'm saying? That's that woman energy saying, all right, I'm going to do what needs to be done. I'm going to make sure this is in order. I'm going to make sure bop, bop, bop. When you talk about women and energy, we are quick to interject in my own story. There's steps. There's levels to this. We talked about this on the uh, uh, old, you know, talk show. There's levels to this. Women is going to make sure the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Men is just going to put the senses together and hope all the pieces is there. Okay? And that's okay because that's where we mesh. That's why men, male and female energy, we go together. That's why, because the things they can't see, we can. And the things that they can't, the things that we can't see, they can. That's why male and female energy go together so beautifully, right? So mamas are going to make sure that happened. Mamas was holding it down. Big mama was the glue of the family. You know what I'm saying? All of these things, that's feminine energy but i feel the where we got how we got here part going back to that original point was that somewhere along the lines that strong feminine energy i'm gonna hold it down i'm gonna make sure the family is together i'm gonna make sure these kids got food i'm gonna make sure all of this is together got shifted where the feminine energy that was holding it down and keeping that family and that household together to start shifting to that masculine energy more so and they like shoot he gone, I'm gonna go have some fun too. Or that masculine energy started shifting against strong and they like, who finna take care of these kids? Like, and that masculine energy started shifting and they like, if he could be in the streets, I could be in the street. And so I feel like the shift started to happen when that masculine energy started taking over that feminine energy for the women. Right, and not putting not everything on the system because you know, I know it's a lot on our plate. Just to try to rephrase that and make sure I understand clearly, um, you're saying that you felt like the shift started happening when women started taking on responsibilities and having to play both mommy and daddy, and now the masculine energy was kind of taking over the, I mean, or the feminine, the women were drawing more from their masculine energy than from their feminine energy. Is that what you think? Absolutely. I've been thinking Absolutely. about that all the time. Like, how come? I, I'm just curious why more single moms are not, or that we don't we don't know anyway. I wonder if there's any surveys around single moms being bipolar. Because like the other day, a while ago, I had to jump between. I had to be hard and tough with my mat, have my masculine energy on, and then I had to at the same time be soft and be feminine with my son. It's just like I gotta look like a crazy person to him. There's no way that I look sane trying to balance all of this out and that's so. why i see a lot of two-parent households where the daddy is that force where it's like all right don't have me call your daddy type thing or okay come here and daddy comes and handle that discipline point and i'm not saying that's right or wrong either but that's a lot of things because even today that was me today like when i have to put my foot down i gotta put on that deep voice and i'm like i said what i said and then i go now if you do this correctly you can get a different side and then he'll switch up his energy and then I'll instantly go back to, okay, that's how we do it. Awesome, babe. Now let's go over here and get your shoes. You know what I'm saying? I like, and the kids are probably like, hey, 
this is crazy, right? But we do have to play both roles. So when I said what I said, I'm going to put that deep voice on and I'm going to be in your face a little bit. You're going to understand I'm serious. And then I have to let you know. But now that you've corrected yourself, I'm going to correct myself. And we're going to be okay. All right? All right. And we're going to go about our business. Like, <laughs> so I, I wholeheartedly understand that. But I feel like for real, somewhere along the line, with the men being gone and stepping out, like mama had to do everything. And I know from a lot of women who who've given accounts from their mothers being single mothers where they didn't feel loved, where they didn't get like praised or hugged or kissed. You know what I'm saying? Because mama was paying bills and do 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 and do do do. Um, so I feel like we have to get that balance back in as that family unit. And I know it's a lot of work that needs to go in there. There's a lot of reasons why it's not together and stuff like that. But we got to do the best we can. Men, if you're watching this, we we need you in the household. You, your children need you in the household. Mamas who's holding it down. Congratulations, mommy. Keep holding it down. <laughs> you know? And then also I want to add to those men who, because there are men who don't have kids or their kids are grown and gone and they step in. They step mm -hmm. in as the father figure or the masculine energy to help the woman allow her self to be feminine so mm -hmm. to those men, first off thank you thank you and, and we appreciate you and love you so and much. continue doing that stuff because we need you absolutely personal experience we need you <laughs> because <Me too. laughs> it's just it's like you said like we have already said several times it's super hard to be single mom and play daddy and mommy at the same time and not look like a crazy person. And I feel like a crazy person. Mm -hmm. So when y'all step in and and even in the littlest ways, you see a, a young man or a small child and you gotta be careful, of course you gotta read the mom, but I'm gonna just say for me, I've had people step in and say, come on Mason, get it together. And he get it together real quick. Cause they got the bass in their voice or whatever it is, the masculine energy, that's what it mm -hmm. is. When I put it Kids on, read energy really well. I just, I appreciate y'all men who do that. I ask for you to continue doing it because y'all are a blessing to those single mothers. And then single mothers, here's what you can do to help your um, feminine energy stay abundant and so that you can continue pulling on it, right? Make sure you are surrounding yourself with people with masculine energy that support you. Mm -hmm. We have, I have a buttload of a ridiculous amount of sister friends I can call on at any given time, right? It's equally important for me to have a few masculine friends that I can yeah. be like, yo, I need you to come get this little boy in order. I mean, right yeah. now we don't have that issue, but one day. So I'm going to need you to <laughs> So when we get to that day, I can call on you. And he'll get himself together real quick. And the thing is, too, you can't just call him when he's 16. Like, they, that person, whoever that person is, has to be there consistently throughout to be that rapport and that respect. Right. Because you, you, my... you show up at 16, they're going to be looking at you like, who is you? Telling me what's the deal. No, you get the hey. out of my face. They're going to be disrespectful. They're trying to do hey. hey, you. But living in that feminine energy is important. And as mothers, uh, sometimes as single mothers, we don't have the opportunity to, especially if we have boys or especially if we're ripping and running and going point A to point B. I think one thing to really stay in your feminine energy um, as a as a woman, I'm I'm new to it, but getting cute. Like don't don't get me wrong, I be cute out in these. Okay, check the facts. New to being cute. What? Getting but new? like, I, this part is the new part. Let me let me elaborate. This okay. is the new part. I'm not a makeup wearer. Okay. Because I mean, look at me. I don't need much. You feel me? Right. You don't. But, need, you don't need. I don't need. Yeah. But I just fell in love with the lip bar. Black owned company, vegan. Um, and I put it on, and I was like, uh, I could not stop looking at me in the mirror. It was super easy, super light, natural products, and I was just in there like, ah, right. I just wanted to throw on some heels, like it amped up 
my feminine energy. So even if it's like little things like that, or getting your nails done, if that's your thing, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, massages, if that's your thing, taking a bath, if that's your thing, whatever it is to pour into you some self-love and to amp up your feminine energy. If it's creating, if it's dancing, you know what I'm saying? You just do a little sexy dance in the mirror, rub yourself down with some shape, whatever it is um, to amp up your feminine energy and have you some me time. I know this one's supposed to, be, supposed to be specifically for the mothers, but we got two single mamas on the line. So what's she think? Uh, <laughs> it just, just kind of went there, you know. We go, we're natural. We're going with the flow. <laughs> but tapping into that feminine energy and having you some me time. And even if you're not a mother, for the women who are, who need, because we, on a day-to-day, women have to be masculine more than feminine a lot of the times because the world is leaning towards masculinity. So even if you don't have children and you're in the workplace from nine to five, seven or five days a week, you're living a lot of times in your masculine energy and then you need a break. So you need me time too to say, no, I'm going to be in my feminine energy. That's why some people clock out on Friday, honey, and you don't recognize them from Friday to Monday. Okay. Because they go ahead and they tap into that feminine energy. They let their head down. They put on their makeup and they put on their heels and they go out and have a good time. Whatever you need to do, we need to make sure we're tapping into that feminine energy and creating shifts within the world where we can be unapologetically living in our feminine energy and dare somebody to say something to us about it. Because the world is, again, leaning towards masculinity, but that is shifting now. There's also a shift happening. I say there's a shift where women are living more in their masculine energy. Absolutely. But there's a shift back that's happening where it's like, no, I'm a woman and you're going to listen. Yeah, I'm living in my feminine energy and you're going to listen and supporting men, more men who are living in their feminine energy as well. And they don't have to be homosexual. Yes, some homosexual people live more in their feminine, feminine or masculine energy, but straight men get criticized for living in masculine energy. If they talk kindly to women, they homies like, man, what you doing? Hold on. Let that man be a gentleman. You know, so we have to we have to find that balance. But I do believe the shift is happening. And it's up to us to create that shift because we create the world that we want to see. So if we really want some change to occur, we can't keep going with the gender roles or the society norms. We got to create something different because there is an abundance of feminine energy and we need it because this masculine energy clearly ain't working have y'all looked at the world <laughs> we just really need to balance it out like it's Air just flight. overwhelmingly masculine right now yeah overwhelming we went to the airplane yesterday Please. we're not going on the airplane yet but it's overwhelmingly masculine and we have to balance it out um, I, I saw, I think I sent you that post on, um, Instagram, the guy talking about women should be able to be, um, successful in feminine energy. We shouldn't have to use masculine energy to get what we need and want. It shouldn't, we should be able to be recognized in our femininity, you know? And unfortunately, like when I saw something happen on the plane yesterday, which I thought was interesting to say the least. What happened was a, gen- a young man, he was so disrespectful. I was just like, where your mama at? <laughs> and he, How old was he? he was grown. He's probably oh, okay. anywhere between 18 and 22. But that's why I was just like, where your mama? Cause we need to talk. Like, you need some real mama energy on you. Cause we need to talk. <laughs> How's she gonna let you come out the house and behave this way? So what I happened? I that this was okay. I was on the phone and they was like, "Okay, the plane about to take off. You need to get off your phone." Everybody knows this. Why? Why? So this man stay on his phone, and so they come the the um the effeminate male white male um. What is it? What do they call? Flight attendant. Flight attendant comes over, a take, t- put your, put your phone away. He gives him some flat. Girl, I don't even remember what he said, but I was just like, that's how you talk to people. He just asked you to put your phone away. We on the plane. They always tell you to put your phone away. Why are you? Is this his first time on the plane? Used. It can't be. Can't be his first time. So then, 
<laughs> this is the part that I thought was interesting. The uh, flight attendant, the first one, he goes and gets the phone and calls the black woman flight attendant. Because she got the energy, right? Right. I was like, I already was like, mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be like, she's going to come up with that mama voice. I said. No, but we already <laughs> She, the, the reason why he's calling her is because she's going to do the masculine energy. That's masculine. That force. That like mm -hmm. put mm -hmm. masculine. And why are we calling on her for that? Why are you not doing it, sir? Because you got it. It's within you. Like it's within her. The station of it. That same thing is within you. <laughs> pull on that. Pull on. I'm going to need you to pull on that, sir. And anyway, she came and she told him to get off the phone. And he's like, am I on the phone? Because he had hurried up and got off the phone before she came. Am I no, on the phone now? No. Do you see me on the phone no, now? I was no. just like, bro. It's not even that serious. But when things like that happen, I look at like, I always go, but why? Like, why you act like that? Because it takes more energy to pull, pull, to pull on that negativity, to prolong this incident. Then she just be like, all right, okay. Put his phone away. <laughs> simple but anyway I just want to acknowledge the fact that here we are in this situation where this man can use his masculine energy and instead of him using it he's calling on a woman to do it instead and we're a black woman. Black woman I mean she was be the only attendant to be fair but I believe if, if it was another white woman on the line it still would have been that black woman that he called because we know we've been trained and going between the two. Yeah. Just like you said. Because she probably a single mama too. <laughs> if she not one, she's experienced one and she knows how to do it. And even sometimes when we when we have another partner in the household, we still just based on environment have adapted the tool of going between the two. You know, it's so interesting too. When I talk to people I know who have significant others. They speak so much about how they still feel like th their experience Let's sounds go. so much like mine. Let's and I'm a good single mom. And I just be like, well, how? You got a whole nother person. But Let's I digress. Go. I don't know. Yeah. What I do know is uh, I am pulling on my feminine energy abundantly to mother my children in ways that, ew, what are you doing? <laughs> they hopefully appreciate when they're adults a little bit, even if they appreciate a little bit of it. And I am pulling on the abundance of my feminine energy and, and learning to really love it, tap into it, exude it. Um, I was manifesting underneath the full moon, and that was one of the things I wrote to, to live and love in my divine feminine energy. Like, Yes, to tap into that. Like, women, let's not just let this be a thing that's there. Like, let's tap into it. Let's use it for our greater good. I'm going to use it to be a better mom. I, I'm going to use it to manifest connections. I'm going to use it to manifest and, and grow my businesses. I'm going to use my feminine energy to project my life to the status it deserves to be on. <laughs> because my feminine energy is creative. So I'm going to create the life I want to live through my feminine energy. And I think that's the thing. Manifest through your, your feminine energy. Create through your feminine energy. Not just a painting or a dance or a poem, but your whole life. What are three ways that you manifest your feminine energy? As we round this show up, what are some three ways that you do it? Three ways. As well. Three ways that I manifest feminine energy. Uh, yeah, your abundant feminine energy. Either manifest or pull from it. Let's say that. I actually like, I'm going to say one way I muster up some feminine energy, like where I feel my feminine energy the most is when I dance. Mm -hmm. um, so I pull up a lot of feminine energy when I dance, when my body moves. I love it. Um since I've been in the house, it's just kind of been me playing some music wherever I am, probably in the living room, because that's where I got the most space to kick and move and flourish. Um, but folk, 
COVID, uh, we used to go out dancing. Yes. Hey, baby, baby, that body gets a moving. You feel me? Girl. Um, and that feminine energy comes through, and I just let it take over. Hey, again, I'm sorry. Uh, what you say? I want to a again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need to a again. <laughs> Man, we used to be at the um, what's that spot over? At, what is it? Northwest side. We used to go to the uh, reggae sub- joint. Subterranean. Subterranean, and then just everywhere else we go. Um, that music hey, takes over. Party. Ask the people if we was at their party. They know we was there. Ask the people <laughs> like that music kick in and that define feminine energy be like present here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. So for so me, music. I'm sorry. I was just saying so music and dancing is one way I like really get it popping. For me, um I really want to do more of this and that is to be sweet in those times where i don't want to be just continue Mm -hmm. like when i have to discipline it doesn't i have to find a way to discipline through my feminine energy because i don't feel good being uh, 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 mm. (laughs) he (laughs) He don't like it so i want to (laughs) We look alike. Do you see that? I'm sorry. I just realized how much we look alike. <laughs> I want to um, be sweet even in those times when I don't want to. What's another one of yours? Um, another one of mine is to uh, pull into self-care. I think that's been my thing. It's been an ongoing thing for me. Um, I don't do it enough. I don't do it enough. And I know it. So once I know better, I got to do better. <laughs> um, so for me, it's really working on pulling into that self, self-care self because all of those things are going to manifest in my divine feminine energy. Um, like they laugh at me, but like me getting my hair done, it's like, I get it done. <laughs> Look at the guy. <laughs> She like, Lord, take the wheels above me now. I kidnap you to say, go get your hair done. Like, I'm like, it's good done. Like, all right. They lock. So I'm out here looking like a rock steady. We okay? I'm in the house, you know. But like those things, I know doing them consistently adds to my feminine energy. You know, um, I mentioned I just got some makeup from the lip bar. Y'all go check out the lip bar, okay? Oh, love it. Black on business. Ah. Uh. Love it. So simple. Like, I fell in love with it. Like the first time I put it on my face, I was like, like <laughs> fell in love y'all um but like so now you know i've probably wanted i've done it twice and both times i've done it, i've just been looking in the mirror like you five so uh, i mean i do that sometimes on a regular too just walking past the mirror but you know the makeup ads um and then like taking long baths like not just the shower not just but taking a long bath and turning everything off turning mommy off turning business off and just go take a long bath and then rubbing me down in some oils and some shade you know um that self-care is is what i think i need to do more of and tap into that feminine energy that was gonna be one of mine because you know that's one of my that's one of my pillars that's your, that's your ish <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a- your pillars? <laughs> yes that's one of my personal pillars like if- if the self care is not on fleek, the whole building coming down. So, <laughs> shoot, that was supposed to be my next one, but let me think again. Let me think of another one. Um, just amen that. Amen. On that note, though, I just found out how much I like showers. What? Okay. Like a real hot shower today, and it had the whole bathroom all steamed up. I felt like I was in a spa. I was like, showers be the edge. I'm gonna have to, you know, and let the water just run over your body. Yeah. I mean, I take showers, I take mostly baths, but I'll take a shower after the bath, or you know, like I take showers if I'm rushing, but to just like be in the shower, that was so therapeutic. Um, another way to um, pull on or use, um, um, feminine energy to abundantly manifest i got two more ways so i'm gonna say one and hopefully you don't say my other one but one is to be creative and make art um making things you found it you you did find it very good you're pulling 
from places that don't exist, right? So that is that creative energy. That's that feminine energy. And when you pull from that place, you pull abundantly. Because again, it's it's like where the cup where the cup is like oh. empty per se is actually full of air oh. <laughs> it's and abundant I'm, in air <laughs> i'm pulling from that it's nothing in there there you go um <laughs> I'm pulling from it and he's obviously pulling from the melted ice but that's one other way that i <laughs> manifest and, and pull from my abundant feminine energy what's one more way for you um, one more way for me, I would say, is communicating. I feel like communicating and, and love and light and openness, it probably, I don't know if it's necessarily just a feminine energy trait, um, but I realize it to be one of mine. And I want to lean on that because it's one of my strong suits and it, it aids me and it aids others in manifesting goals and bringing people together and bringing businesses together and bringing um, change. So networking and communicating and using my voice and, and the gift of communication and sweetness because it, it comes from love. It's not like I'm aggressively trying to get you to understand something. It's Hey, how you doing? And that hey, how you doing turns into <laughs> lifelong friendships and business partnerships and connections and links and travels and a whole lot of other things from hey, how you doing? Me how I was doing. <laughs> what you say? I said, right. Remember that time you asked me how I was doing at the Southside Community Arts Center? And look at us now. You know what I'm saying? So that really sweet, hey, how you doing, um, can manifest into so many, so many amazing things. So I want to lean more into that and knowing that it's one of my superpowers and knowing that that sweetness and that willingness to communicate can end up at the highest of heights and places that we never imagined that, hey, how you doing could go um, when it comes from love and it's genuine and, and you foster that. So that's one that I'm going to lean into. Well, one more way for me is my, my, um, my. actually kind of tied to what you were talking about, manifestation, hey, using your I imagination. Mean, um, I mean, tied to creativity, I mean, but I mean so more so... I mean, Using your imagination to like manifest the things you want to see in the world, writing it down, like do vision boards. If you ever come to a, a workshop, um, uh, what is it? Life mapping workshop. I'm sorry, my brain went blank for a second. <laughs> I'm like, come on, words, come back to me. But if you ever go to a life mapping workshop. <laughs> Another opportunity to manifest and imagine what do you want to see in the world. And that's what I mean today. Um, water is a conduit, meaning that it, you can send energy through water. Mm -hmm. Anytime water touches me, I start speaking out what I want to see, feel. I start freestyling. I everything comes out during those times because that's not yours. Stop. Because I'm manifesting and I'm imagining the world that I want to see. So yeah, that's one last way that I like to manifest feminine abundance energy. And that's powerful. I remember just sitting in the kitchen one day and closing my eyes and I saw my studio. Like I saw Melanated in America Studios production company and I closed my eyes and I was shouting after that so because it was huge. It was like Tyler Perry Studios but with a big old Melanated in America across the top. You hear me talking? And I was like yo! And the fact that I wasn't even really thinking about it and to close my eyes and see it, like see it, see it. I was like, that's gonna be a thing. I'm gonna get my production company. It's gonna be huge, and we're gonna put everybody on, and we're gonna like change the game for black media. You hear me talking to you? And it, it made me so happy. So just really visualizing, writing it down, yes, and then visualizing it and making a plan to it too. That's another part, like closing your eyes, seeing it, 
writing down and then actually step by step writing those plans down like in your life mapping class like how am i going to get to this um because you got to see yourself there and you got to you got to make sure the plan and the vision is huge and get there and we going to get there through all of this abundant feminine energy <laughs> You want to leave us with a meditation, a uh, breathe moment, so. Yeah, we're going to make it quick because we are going over. And also, I got two very loud little people over here. So we're going to be real quick with it. We're going to take some deep breath <laughs> into the nose, out through the mouth. Let's do it real quick. <sighs> two more. <sighs> Last one. On that last breath, I want you to go to your regular breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. And as you're here listening in, take a moment to really think about and imagine what it is you want to see and how do you want to manifest your feminine energy. Whether you are a man or a woman, how do you want to express your feminine feminism? Is it by being creative? Is it about taking care of the self? Is it about building through communication? How are you going to manifest your creative energy? Focus all your mind's eye on that. Take a deep breath in. <laughs> And a deep breath out. And a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. On this last breath, I want you to think of an intention on what you have to say, who you are. Take a few seconds. Think of that intention. What is it that you need to be in order to set forth those things that you thought of? I want you to put the words I am in front of that thing. For me, those words are peaceful. So I am peaceful. Go ahead and say that to yourself. Hold on to that. And know that that is part of your route to divine feminine abundance. That's that piece. Thank you, D. That was good though. I am. I am. I ams are so important, y'all. I ams is so important. Speak it. Whatever you want to be, speak it like it's already done. And use that feminine energy to manifest it. Use your imagination and soak it into your body and become it. I am beautiful. I am strong. I am powerful. I am diligent. I am committed. I am soft. I am kind. I am loving. I am joy. I am light. I am abundant. I am prosperous. I am living in my divine feminine energy. I am manifesting the life I want to live and the life I deserve. I am worthy of all the doors and opportunities that will open for me. I am manifesting more so. Okay. You are worthy and you are worth it, y'all. And I hope y'all enjoy this abundance show abundance uh talking about feminine energy and how we all male and female have to live in that energy and find a balance between the two and we definitely thank y'all for tuning in for the last few months um to the breathe experience yes. we will yes. be back after this planned hiatus be yes. looking at the page um, for announcements on so when we come back, hey, because y'all know we love y'all. Um, it's just best that we go ahead and take some time to reflect so we make sure we're bringing y'all the best of the best top notch content. And we might have some new, new on the way back. Y'all know how we do. We're gonna recap, see what works, see what we can bring to y'all because y'all might need something new. Um, we did the last breathe experience today. We did the last Free Your Mind Friday on Friday. But like Miss Dion Victoria said, stay tuned to the pages and we'll be back soon for y'all with some more consistent and amazing content.
content. We love y'all. Thanks for rocking with us every Tuesday and every Friday and following the pages throughout the week. Um, and we'll be back. We'll be back soon to give y'all some more fire because, you know, we're going to miss y'all and y'all going to miss us. So until next time, go follow the YouTube page. Go watch the old videos and reminisce until we come back. All, all of the old breathe experiences are up there. All of the past Free Your Mind Fridays are up there. So just go watch us until we come back. Y'all, we left y'all with some trinkets, okay? If you ain't see all the shows, go catch up on YouTube until we come back. On Instagram is we underscore heal underscore heal because we heal heal for real. We heal heal.org is also our website. And then all over on Facebook, it is the Healing Academy and the Breathe Experience. We love y'all.